Today. Well, hello. Uh, so you might be thinking, what is that man to cooking today? Now, although I would always like to cook for you roast dragon or steamed owl with speedboat sauce or things to that effect, um, I couldn't get the ingredients I wanted this week. And then when I did go and get some weird ingredients, I went and caught two rather beautiful pike. Paul said, keep them. We'll cook them next week. But no, Val was off in another direction and I smoked them. So Paul turns up at the door today and goes, great pike. And I was like, oh God, I've smoked it all and it's in the fridge. So we're gonna do a pasta dish today. And a pasta dish that is so unutterably delicious for its bonkersness. This is something I ate in um, the, I think, uh, where was it? Anyway, somewhere in the Austrian Alps. So first, I'm going to get my apple sauce on the go. Yeah, I thought you were going all, all Jamie Oliver on me. Uh, no, I couldn't do that because I'm not Jamie Oliver. You know, Jamie's more perhaps trying to save busy people time. Speaking of which, hold on a minute. It used to be called macaroni cheese. Now it's called mac and cheese. Why? Are we all so keen to save time that you have to dump a syllable in the middle? It's macaroni cheese, not mac and cheese. It sounds like a raincoat with a bit of cheddar in the pocket. It's weird. So I won't call it mac and cheese. This is macaroni cheese. Ah, I like consistency in my life because I'm one of the least consistent people in the world. And uh, here is Aggie playing ball with us as she normally does. That is one apple, right, let's do two. And this restaurant that served it, I'm really bad at skiing and very good at eating. Um, so I would go there every day and they really liked seeing me walk through the door because when I'd finished one bowl of this, I'd immediately order another one. I um, could barely ski down the hill for sinking in the snow. This is just such an unusual, uh, glorious winter warmer. So roughly chop your apples, put them in the pan. And, and just normal apples. You want an apple that's a good tart apple. You don't want one of those big kind of candy red fluffy things. You want a good apple which is sweet but has got some sharpness in it. So, um, apples, wasser, water, just a little bit. And then a tiny squidge of white wine vinegar which sharpens it up even a little bit more. I do a kind of cap full, some salt. And the apples are gonna to cook till they're undeniably, pathetically, hopelessly soft, and then are going to be whizzed to the consistency of food that you feed babies. Um, lardons, I like them to be very precise lardons. Kind of immaculate, like little kind of uniformed soldiers. So again, from my lovely butcher, Swaledale, I like to buy my smoked streaky bacon whole and then I can kind of do what I want. And sometimes I will cook a whole piece of bacon, just boil it lightly, and make a delicious watercress or parsley sauce, or have it with a lentil vinaigrette salad. So sometimes I'll cook that actually as a joint of meat. Could you have bacon and eggs? Yeah, you could, and especially if you kind of put your bacon into some dark brown sugar, and then, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of beer and some sherry vinegar, then you can have a really kind of, you know, tarry, sweet bacon with your eggs in the morning, and that would be very suited to cutting the bacon very thick. Okay, so here is my lardons. So a light cook, nothing too aggressive. So you've got bacon in here, you've got lots of butter in here. This is also, you know, as this is food that you eat in minus two, with the snow falling, with your ski goggles on your head, this is cold weather food, and it's just got cold here in London. Okay, so on that goes. And then some flour. One good spoonful of flour. Okay, butter's melted. In goes my flour. And you want to cook that kind of floury dry taste out, so probably a patient minute of stirring. My apples are on the go. There's little balls bouncing beneath my feet as a hopeful dog looks at me for playtime. 
I'm pretty sure that if I put Aggie in a chef's hat, turn the chair back to front against my cooker, she'd just do wonders in the kitchen. She's eaten scallops, longestine, she had some ox liver the other day, she's had venison heart, she knows her way around a cheese board. That's a really epicurean terrier we've got down there. Okay, so contrary to normal white sauces, we're starting with wine. I'm gonna switch from a spoon to a sieve. Can you see in here, Paul, you get this nasty kind of flagging up first, but we'll get through that. Right, now, one good spoonful. I would probably normally be using German mustard. They all taste very different. German mustard is a little bit more, kind of a little more sweet and a bit more vinegary, but the mustard's in. Now I'm gonna revert to milk. Okay, a little bit of milk. I want something that the, the sauce wants to be rich and smooth and luxurious. It doesn't want to be kind of claggy. Then I'm going to put in cream. Ah, uh, sod it, all of it. Oh, yeah. Okay, now, a little tidy up. When I get excited, things can become a little messy. Your kitchen is about it. I actually trained as a painter, but then as very few kind of early 20s people probably do, I was pretty wayward and out of control. And although I was, you know, enjoying my painting career and it was going to, well to some degree, I just thought this is going to end badly and you need discipline. And because I'd grown up in this life of two brilliant cooks as parents, and because I did more, I used to spend more time cooking octopus in my bed sit and doing things to goats. That sounds a bit weird in my bed sit on my baby belly than I did finishing my artwork at college. And I just thought I'm going to go into restaurants because I allowed to stand on my feet and be hyper all day. Um, and it's creative, and ultimately it will give me discipline, and that's really, really what I need went into kitchens and never looked back and still do the art in my spare time. Okay. Ah! Um, ox liver leaping out at me. This is um, Fior de Alpi, a really delicious Alpine cheese, a little bit like um, Gruyere, but a little bit stinkier. Um, and then I couldn't get any Fontina. It's quite hard to find Fontina. They, they don't like to let it go from that Val d'Aoster. And then this is called Fontal, which is actually from over the border next door. Um, not quite the same, um, but I thought I'd give it a try. But this is lovely and creamy. Both cow's cheeses. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is kind of sour and rubbery and very cheesy. This is a little bit more, it's like Gruyere, it's more nutty, but it's also suitably stinky. And why do you add two cheeses? Because they both do two slightly different things. This is very kind of textural and it adds a bit of sourness, and then that kind of adds a bit of nutty stinkiness. God, cheese sauce. Cover me in cheese. No, that's an alarming idea. Right, okay, anyway. Okay, bacon. So it's just cooked through, but not overly crispy. I don't want crisp in here. That is such good bacon. <laughs> Greasy lens, go on. Delicious. Yeah? So again, not too much bacon. And then just give it a little bit of a bubble. Now, the really important thing here is that the garlic goes in raw. Um, and it's why it's so important to buy, when you buy garlic, mm, butter, when you buy garlic, it should be really, really, really hard to press. Um, tight, everything kind of tight and hard. Okay, right, one large onion. This was such an epiphany when I ate this for the first time. This kind of bizarre plate of pasta arrived and I just thought, holy, moly, that is exciting. And then I became pretty much speechless 
through the meal as I savoured every mouthful. And then, as I say, went to the restaurant every single day for a week. Um, to the point that by the end of the week, um, they didn't even bother asking me what I'd come for. They just plonked it down in front of me. Cut your onions very thinly. Back to the flour. Not too much. Just about a heaps tablespoonful. Okay, and then give them a tumble in the flour. Okay, I've done far too many, but I'll just put these in a container and eat them over the week. Crispy onions, frankly, you can never have enough of them. You've got to be careful here. I don't have a fryer at home, so I do all my frying in a pan, but you've got to pay attention. You don't want to set fire to your house and be seen running into your street with your jumper on fire and then get hit by a passing car, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm using sunflower oil. Sunflower oil because you can get it to a good high heat. Do you like deep frying them? What kind of a question is that? Everything deep fried is delicious. Because you will do a little fry test, I'll just take one, and when you drop it in, it should kind of dance around, um, fizzing all over. And then you've got to be quite careful because also the onions will, of course, take the temperature of the oil down, but then it'll raise again. And what you don't want to do is take your mind off it and suddenly you've got a pan with flames leaping up. I have seen some appalling injuries <laughs> over my kitchen career. Um, things which um, would make you feel queasy where to I explain it, but oil burns are really nasty. Just test your apples. What they want to be is really mushy and they're done. So we're going to come back to that. Not far off, but not yet. Okay, right, here we go. So in batches. Space them out of it and make sure that they're all submerged so that they're properly cooking. Once they start going brown, they'll go very, very quickly. So turn them, keep turning them. These are just beginning to brown now. Just the very early stages of browning. And take them out a little bit before you think they should come out because obviously they're covered in super hot oil and they're gonna keep on frying. I really should have a slotted spoon for this, but I've taken it on a job somewhere else and then left it behind, infuriating. Um, right, okay, so these are gonna come out. Fried onions are a labor of love, but it's just so pleasing when you've done them yourself. So, onto some paper. Get all the little bits out. Right, a little bit of salt on the onions. Pasta's boiling. Water's boiling. Good whack of salt. And then I've got about, don't know, 70 grams of macaroni. Poured in from a dramatic height. Okay, I've got it now. No, just blow through the tube. No, 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 no. Um, uh, take a deep breath and, and blow. No, no. Just control the... Through the tube. No. Blow through the tube. <laughs> Not traditional, but that's it. You know, quite often when people are cooking, it's always a good idea to read the recipe first, because if you don't, you'll get to a point where there's other parts needed. And then while you're kind of, the main part is cooling down on a plate, you suddenly realize you were meant to have chopped up a whole load of bits and bobs. So always read a recipe through, so that you don't get to that end stage and go, God, I meant to have prepared that to garnish it with. Now we're gonna get our cheese sauce back on. Garlic, raw. Just stir that in. Have a 
find a black pepper. What was that for? Because yeah. I love you. <laughs> Ready. Here we go. So, there's quite often that talk about keep a bit of the pasta water to ease the sauce out of me. I want the water gone, so I give it a proper draining. So, back in the pan, let's cook out the remaining liquid just by steaming it out. Actually, I'm going to put all of it in, that's perfect. I'm now not just excited, I'm in a high state of excitement. Okay, now that's right. This is luxurious and wet. A big dollop of the apple sauce, and then a pile of crispy onions. And how insane is that? Now I know we've got all these filmy things to do. I can always but I'm gonna eat this now. All the sun parts, make sure you're eating it all together. I'm speechless. It's rich with cheese. You've got that garlic twang, garlic and cheese. You've got that whiny thing that they do so well. Whiny, whiny. You've got that whiny thing they do so well in the, you know, alpine places, wine and cheese garlic, ham, all those things you know sell so well for those that apre ski food. But then you've got bonkers apples on top and crispy onions. Mm. It's nuts. I just want to keep on going, which I'm going to do. I mean, that is just simply, if you want, if it's cold outside and you don't want to turn your heating on inside, for God's sake, make this. Mm. Mm. For another delicious pasta dish, go and see our Patreon site and um, something dark, inky and mysterious. <laughs>